your energy forecast for Thursday, July 25th. Okay, so we got a lot going on here today. It is a semi-busy day in the cosmos with 13 different aspects. Of course, 10 of those are going to involve the moon, but let's talk about the moon for just a second. The moon has been in this Pisces energy, will continue to be in this Pisces energy until 10.32 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that is when the moon is going to go void, of course. We sit in that until 10.53 a.m., so a very short window of time to have the moon void that works in our favor because when the moon is void things are shaky things are uncertain things are unstable but we actually love what's going on with the moon here today because of course we've been sitting in the moon in Pisces that moon in Pisces trying to wrap up that old emotional karmic cycle trying to bring some loose ends to a completion point trying to bring a certain acceptance a certain finality to certain circumstances that have definitely disrupted our inner realm over the last month ish now the moon shifting into Aries energy at 10 53 a.m. is like a clean space a clean slate we are very eager beavers to rip the rear view mirror off of the car we don't want to look back we want fresh beginnings we want to initiate something new and of course that aggressive energy that comes with Aries energy is going to have us very high in I'm going to call it reactive energy and impulse energy which of course isn't the greatest we do have to resist acting on impulse however the different mood the different attitude that takes over when the moon is in Aries is definitely going to work in our favor so this is also in the backdrop of two major events taking place here today. The first one is that Mercury will be moving out of Leo energy and will be moving into his rulership in Virgo energy. The second part of those astro shifts is that this is actually the last day that Chiron, the wounded healer, is going to be direct. We are going to see Chiron go retrograde here tomorrow on the 26th, and that is going to take us to the very last day of this year. So we are definitely in for, again, some, let's call it turbulence in the energy sector of our reality. We are going to feel the highs, the lows, the everything in between here today. Again, with 13 different aspects popping off, a relatively busy day in the cosmos. And we have some sudden shifts, some sudden changes that yes, are going to pressurize, again, the head space where Mercury is involved and the heart space where Chiron is involved. And of course, with the moon shifting, we are stepping away from looking so close at the endings and we're actually opening up our heart our head to the possibilities of the future so we have that going on as well so if you haven't listened to the energy forecast for mercury moving into virgo i'm going to recommend you do that there's an astro forecast out there for chiron's retrograde and of course if you haven't downloaded your leo season e-guide as of yet i'm going to recommend you do that and capture where it is that you're currently at, where your head's at, where your heart's at, where topics and themes and circumstances are at, because these topics and themes are going to be the foundation, if you will, first of all, where Mercury is concerned from now until basically ushering us into October and where Chiron's involved, this is the rest of the year. So very important transition taking place here today. Now, with all of that being said, I am going to also just recommend that you take a listen to this week's Ascension Forecast. That kind of gives you the highs, the lows, the everything in between of some of the Ascension symptoms that we can expect to actually experience while these energy shifts are taking place. All the information is there for you. You can tap in whenever you're being called to kind of figure out why it is that you feel the way that you feel, why you're thinking the way that you're thinking, and where it is that you're supposed to go from here. So we kick the day off with the moon still in this Pisces energy, making a positive interaction with Chiron, who again is pretty much standing still at this point, ready to pivot ready to take that energy, ready to move inwards for an internal examination of the healing process 
of the healing path that we're currently in. The moon interacting with Chiron in this way is a good feel. It's a good vibe. We are feeling confident. We're feeling powerful. We're tapping into that warrior mood, that warrior spirit to tackle the issues as they come at us. That moon in Pisces is very healing, very changing, very transformative to our soul, to our spirit. While Chiron is more focused on the ego avatar, how we're actually expressing this change of soul and spirit through the physical form and out into the world. This is putting us in a situation where we're more open to kind of learning from the people from the world around us. We're more focused on how we can grow, how we can make some progress, how we can evolve into the next version of our best selves. The moon is then going to sextile Uranus, the great awakener who is in Taurus energy. A sextile is a beautiful interaction. It means that we are gaining some insight. We're gaining some clarity, especially on the vision, the goal, the dream that we are now inspired and excited to pursue. Again, you've probably heard me mention before, we love when Pisces energy and Taurus energy gets to work together in a favorable way because the Pisces energy downloads us with the dream with the vision, with the goal. It's something dreamy, something imaginative, something creative that we actually get excited and inspired to think about. The Taurus energy that Uranus is currently in helps to bring this goal, this vision, this dream into form. Uranus, being the great awakener, likes to give us this aha moment, this epiphany, this download of vision in order for us to honestly push the boundaries of our comfort zone, be more willing to take a risk, more willing to pivot, do something out of the realm of normalcy in order to create a different result. So this is going to be a good buzz for us, again, kind of pushing us into the vision, the goal, the dream that we now want to build, we want to create, we want to bring to life. The moon in Pisces then going to make a very tough interaction with Mercury. Mercury is the ruler of the mental plane. He rules over information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. He is literally in the final degree of Leo energy. There's an intensity here. Again, Mercury in this Leo energy. We're trying to get heart and head aligned. Even more than that, we're trying to gain a visual on these big ideas, this big dream, this big vision that our heart now needs us to pursue. The moon being our heart space, Mercury being our headspace, they're not on the same page. They are just having a hard time communicating, they're having a hard time understanding one another. Again, the moon in Pisces energy, although we want to start looking forward, the natural dominancy is to look back. We are ending something. We're closing the door on something. We are hella nostalgic at this particular point in time. Yes, we are coming to a certain term of acceptance that we are walking away from chapters, from lessons, from situations and circumstances that we didn't think were going to end in the way that they did, however they did. So now we're coming to, a, again, an acceptance of this. Mercury, on the other hand, Mercury's feeling a lot of pressure. Mercury's about to jump into his rulership. But at the final critical karmic degree of this Leo energy, we are feeling the push, the pull away from the past, and we want to focus on the future. Thus, why they're not getting along, why they're not even on the same page, why they're not even speaking the same language as of yet. Now, 10.32 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon in Pisces energy coming up to, teaming up with, bumping into Neptune. Neptune rules over the Pisces energy. Neptune is retrograde at the 29th critical crisis degree of this Pisces energy. And a conjunction means that there is a, a, a reset going on. There's just an, as much of an ending as there is a beginning. The ending is that we're putting this pain and trauma of this old karmic cycle, this old emotional cycle behind us. We are putting, I'm going to say, we're putting to bed the old visions, the old goals, the old dreams that the old version of self had that we know are no longer kind of, you know, viable. They're no longer feasible. Now, the beginning is that we are letting that go wholeheartedly. Yeah, we may shed a few tears over the endings and the closures, but we are quickly pivoting 
to conjuring up a new goal, new vision, a dream that not only is going to fill the void of the things that we're letting go of, the things that are ending, the things that are coming to a closure point, but it's actually calling a higher mission, a higher truth to our higher selves, meaning the goal, the vision, the dream that we are now trying to kind of create in our mental plane and in our heart space is much bigger than the dream that we just let go of. It is at this particular juncture that the moon is going to go void. Of course, we shift into that Aries energy at 1053 AM. We sit in that for about an hour. And then what happens? We have Mercury in the final degree of this Leo energy, making a tough interaction with Neptune, who was retrograde at the final degree of the Pisces energy. So let's talk about this for a second. Mercury rules over our mental plane. Neptune rules over our higher selves, our intuition, our creativity. Now, this is going to be, first of all, an intensity in our headspace. Again, why I think you should go back and listen to the Ascension forecast, because these energy shifts are going to have major repercussions on our physical form, especially where the headspace, the head pressure, the head discomfort is concerned. This particular interaction is going to pressurize the choices, the decisions that we currently have to choose from, and it is going to make decision making an absolute challenge, an absolute nightmare. Suddenly, the confusion kicks in from Neptune. Neptune, typically speaking, kind of casts a delusional fog over reality, if you will. And of course, Mercury being in Leo energy is as real as reality can get. And so first of all, we tap into the being torn energy between the decisions, the choices that we currently have on our plate. Secondary to that, the layer of confusion further disorients us in order for us to be hella confused about where it is that we want to go from here. This is going to create a lot of disorganization in our thoughts. This is going to have us focused on things that actually don't matter, even though we're making them matter, because again, the Leo energy is involved. So we're a little bit extra. We like to magnify things to a certain over-exaggerated type of energy and degree. The confusion and the daydreaming is going to take over. We do not want to sit in reality. We would prefer to delude ourselves to the vision, the goal, the dreams that we want to be focused on because they bring warm and happy thoughts to us when the truth of the matter is in order to actually bring those daydreams to life, it's going to require a huge to-do list of acceptance, of accountability, of responsibility that many of us are not willing to stand in at this present moment. This is, are we going to give ourselves permission to live in la la land and conjure up a daydream that is so disconnected from reality, but it makes us feel good in the present moment? Or are we willing to give ourselves a little bit of a reality check, pluck ourselves out of that daydream and at least anchor ourselves in reality so that we're not setting ourselves up for disappointment when this confusion bubble pops? That particular energy, the way it's going to manifest is up to us individually. And so you have the warning, you have the cautionary note. There is a little, I'm going to say a pro to striking a balance between living in la la land and constantly giving yourself a reality check. We don't want to lose ourselves so far into la la land that again, we're conjuring up a vision that not only is not attainable and not achievable, but that will set us up for that disappointment when our bubble bursts. So 14 minutes later, the moon in this Aries energy is going to sextile beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer who is retrograde in this Aquarius energy. First of all, we love fire and air energy working together in a positive aspect. That's what we get with Aries and Aquarius energy because fire and air create a spark, a fire, a flame that cultivates a new passion and a new intensity, a new inspiration to actually see something through. The moon is our emotions. Pluto likes to do a deep dive in our psyche to flip the script, to have us empowered instead of feeling weak and vulnerable. And so this particular mood and attitude is a serious one. It is a warrior type of spirit. 
We don't care about the blockages. We don't care about the challenges. We don't care about the obstacles that we are going to face. We want to start a new chapter. We want to initiate a new karmic cycle and nothing at this point in our mood and attitude is going to stop us. Major change, major shift in our energy, in our focus, especially pivoting out of that Pisces energy that had us looking back. We are strictly looking forward. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, who is in Gemini energy, another fire and air interaction. We love the moon and Jupiter interacting in a positive way, regardless of what energies they are in, because this motivates us. This inspires us. This gives us a sense of optimism, a sense of confidence that we've been lacking for many, many moons. The moon in this Aries energy is a warrior type of spirit. Jupiter in this Gemini energy, again, showing us the options, the opportunities that we have available to us to grow to move on, to move forward, to make some progress towards a new goal, new vision, new dream. We are tapping into all the positive vibes, all the positive feels that's going to keep us motivated, especially when we start running into roadblocks to continue to push through them. The moon is then going to make a little bit of an awkward interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in leo energy so this is fire on fire action we love fire because fire helps us to burn away the heavier emotions burn through the cords the attachments to the past it also reignites a fire a spark a flame within us to help us cultivate a new passion new inspiration new motivation new determination to actually see things through venus in the leo energy she's having a major change of heart she realizes where it is that she's got to boss up. She's got to be courageous enough to actually do the hard things that happen to be the right things that happen to align with our heart space because she now understands what she needs, what she wants, what she desires in life, especially to return the happiness, the joy, the pleasure to the realm and reality of her experience. And she knows what she needs, what she wants, what she desires to feel safe and secure and stable, not only in her physical realm, but also where relationship dynamics are concerned. So this is an aha moment of an emotional want, need, and desire. We're recognizing what our heart is asking us to do, asking us to pursue. Not only are we kind of being lent the boldness, the bravery, the courage from the Leo energy that Venus is in, but we have a fighting warrior type of spirit being triggered and activated by the Aries energy that the moon is in. The moon then goes ahead and trines the sun in Leo energy. So again, fire on fire action. Anytime that the moon and the sun come together, there's going to be an aha moment. There's going to be an emotional awareness of what we need, what we want, what we desire, what we have to do, what we have to pursue. The moon in Aries energy is ready to fight, fight for what's right, fight for what we want fight for what we need, fight for what we desire. The sun shining a bright light in Leo energy needs us to stand up and to stand out, needs us to do what we need to do to fulfill the wants, needs, and desires within ourselves. Yes, it's going to require us to be big and bold and brave and courageous like the lion, the king of the jungle. We really need to kind of roar. We need to declare who it is that we are, remind the other jungle dwellers of who it is that we are as well and what it is that we need to be fighting for. This is a major, major shift in our mood and attitude. This is a major growth point. This is a major, let's call it clarity point on what we're act what actually means the most to us and what we're willing to fight for. The moon is then going to sextile Mars. Okay, so Mars rules over the Aries energy that the moon is in. So anytime that we're interacting with the ruler of the energy that the moon is in, there's always a little bit more of an oomph, a little bit more of an intensity, if you will. Mars is in Gemini energy. So again, we have fire and air working in our favor. Mars 
he is rearing to go. Yes, he's in Gemini energy. Yeah, he's kind of debating between how we're going to kind of exert ourselves and aggress ourselves on a particular path in a particular direction towards a particular goal. The Gemini energy has us divided in what that path, that direction actually should be. Regardless, we're excited over something. We're inspired over something. We are rearing to go. The impulsivity that you are going to feel right now with this particular energy interaction is going to put you in a situation to take action and make moves. Hopefully you're not acting on impulse. Hopefully you're just engaging the physical body, giving it a healthy outlet for some of this pent up energy and aggression. We do have ants in our pants. We do want to kind of, you know, see some progress if I do say so myself. However, this particular interaction is going to get the fire started. Okay, we definitely have more pep in our step. We definitely have more focus than anything else. And we are a little bit more, I'm going to say decisive than we were earlier in the day. The fog of confusion is kind of being removed at this particular point in time. And our desire to choose to decide so that we can take action on that particular choice point is building in energy. 6.42 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mercury is moving into his rulership in Virgo energy. Again, please listen to the astro forecast for this particular event. Bust out your Leo season e-guide. Capture where your head is at. Listen to your July zodiac forecast for your sun, your rising, your moon to understand where this particular energy is going to impact you the most. We sit in that particular energy for like two and a half hours. Then we have the moon in Aries energy, making a positive interaction with Mercury in this Virgo energy. We love this. First of all, let me just remind you that Mercury in Virgo energy, the Virgo energy is the fixer, the healer, the problem solver of the Zodiac. But what we have to do is get hella focused on the problems, on the issues at hand. The only way to fix a problem is to recognize that a problem exists. Now, the moon in Aries giving us the aggression needed in order to tap into that warrior spirit and do what needs to be done in order to fix the issue, in order to push through the obstacle, in order to kind of resolve the challenge. Having the moon, our emotions, having Mercury, our headspace get along they're coming together they're on the same page they're saying hey here's a problem how are we going to fix it here's the solution let me go at it okay so in the realm of communication yes we're going to need a little bit of time to kind of acclimate to this new headspace to this new perspective to this new way of thinking and new way of communicating now let me just say Mercury in Virgo energy, when it comes to communication, we are only reliant on matter of facts. We're not really bringing emotions into the realm of conversation here. And what emotions we are bringing in, again, moon in Aries, very straightforward, almost like verbal vomit, very harsh, if you will, in the delivery. So we're, if you find yourself in a, in a situation where you're having a heart to heart or you're having a conversation where, you know, we're really talking about the finer details and the changes that need to be made, there's likely going to be an abruptness and in, in your face. This is how it is, whether you like it or not type of energy. And that in itself is very sobering. That in itself is very eye opening. You're definitely going to feel that major shift in your headspace, in your heart space with this particular interaction. Now, the last thing that we have going on here today is the sun in Leo energy, sextiling, beautiful interaction with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire in this Gemini energy. So basically what we can kind of understand for this is that we're plucking out the most amount of confidence that we've been able to kind of harness within ourselves for a very long time. Even more than that, shining a bright light, again, sun in Leo on our heart space on what we truly are passionate about and what we truly desire. We are very confident. We are tapping into the boldness, the bravery, the courage that the Leo energy lends us. Mars on the other hand, He's ready to go. He's confident. He's just ready to make serious moves in life at this particular point in time. And because he's in Gemini energy and was semi kind of, you know, torn between two very different paths and directions, he's very decisive at this particular moment. 
Why? Because the quicker that we can decide, the quicker we can formulate a plan, the quicker we can take action on said plan, the quicker we can end up where it is that we desire to be. This is the kind of rationale, this is the kind of logic, this is the kind of mood and attitude that Mars is in. We have a calling to take action on a particular passion. We need to realize where it is that there is a huge undertaking of us pivoting away from the path of direction that we were walking until that structure kind of collapsed and closed. Now we are excited, we are inspired, we're motivated, we're hell bent damn well and determined to start something new. This could definitely kind of perk you up, make you feel like you want to bust out of the old, take initiative on the new. There is this want, need and desire where we want to accomplish all of the things. We want to just move on. Now, does it mean that our lives are like, you know, tickety boo and perfect at this time? No, but the stress is actually motivating us. The discomfort of the old world, the old reality is actually motivating us to do something about it. It does not matter if what we are doing to move on, to move forward, to evolve, to grow for our own damn selves is rubbing other people the wrong way. We could care less what other people think, their thoughts, their opinions about what we need to be doing for ourselves. We're ready to take on a challenge. We are ready to bust out. We are ready to move on. We are ready to move forward. We are essentially going to feel hella energized and semi-manic under this particular energy. And this is going to be a beautiful energy to dive into the next couple of days with, because of course we are closing the purging cycle that we've been in and we're actually starting to see the space, the room, the ability to pivot and start building towards something new.